Hey guys, it's Clara from Online Fabric Store. Many people swear these crocheted kitchen scrubbers are better than anything store-bought. Our nylon netting is super popular to make these scrubbies. You can also use tulle, but the texture of the netting is ideal for scrubbing pots and pans. They last a surprisingly long time, they don't scratch, and you can wash them in the top rack of your dishwasher. So let's get started. The materials you'll need are nylon netting, a 10 millimeter size N crochet hook, and a rotary cutter and mat, or scissors. No prior crocheting experience is needed to make this easy scrubby. Since it's hard to see the stitches when using the netting, I'm first going to demonstrate with yarn. Make a slip knot by creating a ring with the yarn, then move the yarn behind the circle. Take the crochet hook and pull the yarn through the circle. Tighten the yarn around the hook. Hold the hook in your right hand. I hold the yarn so it's going over my index finger and between the index and middle fingers. The first step is to chain four. This is the most basic crocheting stitch. Move the hook to the left of the yarn and go under so the yarn is looped around it. This is called a yarn over. Pull this loop through the loop already on the crochet hook. Repeat this three more times. It helps to hold the work between your left thumb and middle or index finger. To make this chain into a circle, put the hook through the first stitch. Yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. This is called a slip stitch. You should now have a small circle. Next, chain three like before. Now I'm going to show you the double crochet. Yarn over, put the hook through the circle, catch the yarn with the hook on the other side, and pull it back through the circle. You should now have three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull the yarn through the first two loops. Yarn over again, and pull it through the two remaining loops. That is one double crochet. Repeat this 10 more times. Counting the chain three, you should now have a total of 12 spokes coming out of the center circle. To complete the round, do a slip stitch. Put the hook through the top stitch of the chain three. It looks best to go through the front and back loops of the stitch, so it will look like there are three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all the loops. Chain three to start the next round. We're going to do two double crochets in each stitch which will create a total of 24 spokes. Yarn over, then go through the front and back loops of the first stitch. After one double crochet is complete, go through the first stitch again to do the second double crochet of the round. Repeat until you have 24 double crochets, including the chain three. Slip stitch through the top chain stitch to complete the round. Cut the yarn and pull it through the final loop to finish this side. Repeat these steps to create another circle for the other side, which I've already done. On the second circle, leave the last stitch on the hook. Put the two circles back to back. Push the hook through the front and back loops of the first stitch of each of the circles. Yarn over and pull back through the stitches. With two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through both. Repeat until you get back to the beginning. Cut the yarn and pull it through the final loop. You would normally weave in the ends of the yarn, but I'll leave them since this is just practice. Time to move on to the nylon netting. Fold the netting in half a few times. Using a rotary cutter and mat, cut off the uneven end, then cut the netting into two inch strips. You can do this with scissors, but the rotary cutter is easier. Cut eight to 10 strips, which is about half a yard. Create a slip knot at the end of one of the strips. I find it helps to twist it before knotting. I'm using a size N crochet hook, but you can go smaller or larger. Start by chaining four.
slip stitch to make a circle, then start the first round by chaining three. Double crochet into the center until there are 12 spokes, including the first chain. The netting is harder to work with, and the stitches aren't defined like they are with the yarn. It takes a little getting used to, so don't worry if your first couple tries look uneven and messy. Slip stitch to finish the round. When you get to the end of a strip, simply knot it with another strip. When you get to the knot, make sure it's on the back of the work. Chain three and double crochet two into each stitch. It's hard to pick out individual stitches, so you can just double crochet into the opening between spokes. Double crochet 24 times, counting the chain three. Slip stitch to join the round. When you have two circles, trim all the ends of the netting. You don't have to weave them in since they'll be on the inside. Place the circles back to back. Put the hook through the first gap on the front and back. Yarn over and pull back through. Since it's hard to see the stitches, you can go through the gaps on the second round instead of the actual stitches. Yarn over again and pull through the two remaining loops on the hook. Work all the way around. It does take a little while to get used to working with netting and to get the tension consistent, but the more times you do it, the faster and easier it gets. When finished, cut the netting and pull it through the last loop. Insert the hook through the center and out near the tail of the netting. Hook the netting and pull it out through the center. Pull it tight and cut so it's hidden inside. That completes the scrubby. There are many other ways to crochet scrubbies with different combinations of stitches. You can also use different colors for each round. So make some for your friends, your family, and yourself. I hear they sell very well at craft fairs. Thanks for watching this OFS project.